what an unfortunate time of events. I missed my flight and I'm still in Italy. I'm here today to watch this video called Why MMORPGs are so antisocial now by a gentleman called Mad Season Show. I don't know why he's mad. I don't know why his show is seasonal. I don't know why he's doing a show, but uh, let's just jump into it. Okay, this is a topic that I really want to see, to hear. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. MMOs are a unique genre of game in the sense that they're one of the most player dependent. While there are countless multiplayer games out there where you can play with friends or strangers, it's often optional and the game as a whole is designed to be completed from start to finish solo. And while there's much to do in MMO solo, they seem to be unique in the sense that other players aren't in my opinion, I have done some videos in the recent weeks that I'm saying that the most important part of an MMO is the social aspect. And even though a lot of people claim that retail is not really that social anymore or stick like that, I believe that it's still what makes the game interesting. Maybe people are not that much encouraged to be social, but guys, you're grown-ups be social yourselves why don't you need someone to encourage you and push you with the stick in order to be social find a guild you can join my guild in cataclysm and be friends with other people and build a community and have fun on a whole another level just because you're sharing these moments with someone else even an option but instead a requirement even if you're not interacting with them in any way, their existence is still crucial, which may not sound logical at first, but I'll ask you this. If every single other person playing your MMO quit, and you are the only one left, would you continue to play? Putting group-based content aside, such as raiding, dungeons, and PvP, the value of your gameplay is drastically reduced. Why would you get that ultra-rare mount if there's no one to show it off to? Why farm gold if there's nothing to buy in the auction house? Rare achievements to be proud of no longer exist because now... You don't have to flex on your friends with them. Exactly. Either 0% of the players have them, or 100% have them. How much damage you deal, how good of a tank or healer you are. Everything in MMOs is relative to your fellow player, so if they don't... By the way, I feel like this dude is gonna fall asleep soon. No offense. Probably I sound the same way, to be fair, but I just hope he doesn't fall asleep. Missed. There's little reason to play other than to explore an empty world with nothing but NPCs to talk to. So, this relationship between the players has served as a core foundation of the genre since its inception. But despite this, something you hear quite often today is how antisocial they become, or some would even say toxic. Well, that's the what. But what about the why? Welcome to episode why? three of <laughs> MMO Theory, a series where we analyze the MMO RPG genre and its inhabitants. MMO Theory. Oh, I like that, man. I like that. Why MMOs are antisocial. I'm, I'm gonna check the other episodes as well. And today, we seek to answer why people are saying MMORPGs are not as social as they once were. So the entire discussion of this video will be based around the following concept. If people are seen as assets, they'll be treated as assets. And if people are seen as obstacles, they'll be treated as obstacles. Commonly, MMOs during their early years operated- Dude, this is uh, some serious theoretical shit, man. The weak tie interdependence model which is a concept in sociology where other people who you may not even know are critical to your success maybe it's a tank you find in looking for group chat who tanks the bosses for you or maybe it's somebody with the tailor profession who sells you bags for inventory space or even is something as benign as their existence is used as a marker for comparison of performance. If these people, who you don't even know, nor even interact with, didn't exist, your success would either be hindered or halted altogether. 
Dude, the previous game I was about to ask, is he playing Harry Potter online or something? Scrap that, please. It, it was embarrassing. And this model proved to be quite effective in the early years of the MMO. Because people were dependent on each other, they were more likely to treat each other as the assets they saw each other as, which in turn opened up more opportunities for collaboration and interaction. So really, to understand why MMOs have become more antisocial and toxic, we have to analyze why people now see their fellow players as obstacles instead of assets. There's no one single reason for this. It is. The whole um, community, the whole culture is becoming more toxic, more competitive. Games like League of Legends are seeing people like obstacles. Even some people are seeing their teammates as obstacles. And I think that culture transfers to MMO RPGs as well. In the damage meter, it's not only about how much damage I do and now how can I improve. The damage meter is there now to see which player of my teammates sucks so I can kick him so I can get the better one. It's just so bizarre. Our answers lie not only with how the players have evolved over the years, but also the environment. Another core pillar of MMOs is change and the unknown. It is a genre of game where the finish line is constantly dangled in front of the player like a carrot and when they take a step towards the carrot it is taken a step away although today it's a pretty transparent design philosophy in its birth it was pretty well obfuscated by the unknown and the intimidation that the genre once held players didn't have time to question why they were playing nor did they have any reason to they I have, I have friends whose characters were, why am I playing this game? We played because it was enjoyable and because there's something new to discover around every corner. Familiarity is the villain of the MMO because unfamiliarity brings challenge and intimidation to create these dependencies. In the late 90s and early 2000s, as technology improved and computers had started to become more affordable and standard to households, people for the first time were able to interact from others from across the globe. Multiplayer games were common, but massively multiplayer games, where people explore this shared persistent world and build these online communities and take on large-scale group-based content was brand new, so it was therefore fresh, it was exciting, and it was unknown. Many reminisce fun. Dude, personally, I have never played MMOs or any multiplayer games until I was probably 13 uh, when I start, started first to play WoW. When I explored the online world, I was completely sucked in. I didn't want to go back. I never want to play single player game ever again. I mean, I'm playing single player games from time to time, but it's not as much as I enjoy seeing another person, talking to another person, helping another person out, or someone helping me. To the early days of World of Warcraft, for instance, where somebody is always asking for help on how to find Mankirk's wife, or people are discussing the latest or upcoming patch, server communities interacted with each other on the realm. Dude, what is the music in the back? It's like I'm watching some criminal series, connecting the dots series, I don't know and guild chat was always active. However, just as how the game has evolved, so too has everything surrounding it. And that same person who couldn't find Mankirk's wife due to the evolution of database websites now looks it up on Wowhead. People are now and dis- <laughs> did, you, did you just see that? There. <laughs> Instead of guild chat or the realm forums, and discussions in the in-game chat about new content updates now take place in stream chats or they don't take place at all as there are now comprehensive easily digestible guides released months before the new patches or expansions hit between database websites data mining guide culture early access alpha streamers these MMOs and expansions are solved before they're even released because information in MMOs is power and power leads to advancement, whether that be player power, aesthetics, 
whatever is one of the main goals of the players to draw advancement from an online world these third-party platforms provide more flexible and convenient ways to deliver information and in turn advancement and they also connect fellow players without needing to be in the game itself leading to a much quieter non-dependent and anti-social experience for i don't agree with that because for example i'm in italy right now and i know what is happening with my guild and now i know what everyone needs because of that discord and really i cannot help them but i i see i'm aware what is happening what is you know playing because of this and the passage of time itself players have become better and more knowledgeable they've become better at their classes they know what a dungeon is they know what a raid is they're familiar with a lot of the common raid mechanics and they also know generally what the next content update holds and what's worse is that this wouldn't be as bad if the player base wasn't stagnant one of the major reasons why mmos became popular during this golden era was that they were unique to be able to interact with strangers from across the world and build these communities and tackle these tough challenges was extremely unique and exciting MMOs were one of the very first pioneers of social media, but as the online environment... Yeah, WoW was the first social media. Get out of here, MySpace. Get out of here, Facebook. WoW is my first social media, most important one. ...and has evolved, and social media websites are more and more common. It's lost this unique appeal. A lot of its gameplay elements have also been adopted to other genres of games, whether that be the loot in an action RPG, talent points in an FPS, or a shared persistent world in a survival crafter. All of these things that used to define the MMO genre have been adopted by all others, so it's lost a lot of uniqueness in not only its social nature, but also its gameplay elements, and with it, it's all- But the other games still, if they're online and stuff like that, it doesn't feel the same as an MMORPG because you're in different world, you're in different character, you're in character, you know? Plus its intrigue and the unknown it once held. But that's not the full story here. It is a genre of game that offers rewards for commitment and patience to a player base that has increasingly lost commitment and patience. Technology and social media has brought convenience and accessibility that we couldn't even imagine before they were adopted into the mainstream. But with it, it's also introduced struggles because finding and consuming information no longer requires as much focus. People's ability to focus has reduced by as much as 50% since its adoption into the mainstream. Holy boy, there is a reason why I don't watch Instagram Reels, TikTok Reels, Shorts on YouTube. Most of the time, they're not giving you value, everyone. They're not giving you value. If you think they're giving you value, you're kind of wrong. Most of the time, the things you're seeing there, they're kind of wrong. They're not double-checked. People are just saying stuff so that they can provoke you. They can get your reaction. But attention span... You know, go read a book. And yeah, it takes a little bit more time and sometimes you don't understand it as fast, but it's super rewarding in the end. The casualty is that game genres that are long-term oriented, such as the MMO, have suffered and it's failing to captivate this new generation that's coming into the industry. The genre's player base is getting older, not younger. So due to this diminished uniqueness and people's diminished attention span, it fails to bring in this new, unfamiliar audience and instead retains an aging player base that only gets more and more familiar as time goes on, even on an individual level. The stagnation doesn't just come from its reduced... Just bring back Plunderstorm. That will bring a lot of new players to the game. I'm telling you, Blizzard, to listen to me. ...capability to bring in these new players. It also comes from its inability to lose players. There is a huge sunk cost fallacy with MMOs where you have people who have been playing a single one for years or decades even. For some, it's all about the moment and experiencing them is the reward itself. But for many others, to jump ship and to play a different MMO 
in a way is equivalent to wasting this immense investment of time and money. These games are almost constructed to be these virtual lives and people have dreams. Yeah, because you're living in a different universe, you want to be a different character, you don't want to be your 9 to 5 life, you know, and it's fine. As such, and they take it very seriously and they put a lot into it. So not only is the genre failing to bring in... This right there reminded me that I probably need to farm some gold in order to get a WoW token because I'm scuffed. I don't have 20 euros for game time. Unfamiliar players within itself these new MMOs are failing to seduce this aging player base from the ones that they are quite intimately familiar with due to how much they have invested into it. Familiarity is the death of dependency. It breaks this weak tie interdependence model that the genre used to be crafted around. And because of this, there's no more push to ask for help, to ask questions, or to interact with each other at all. And this itself has created another problem, perhaps in an attempt to attract this TikTok Zoomer generation into stepping into the genre. One of the reasons why MMOs now feel antisocial is that they're simply designed to be antisocial. It's undeniable. Interacting with other people is seen as inconvenient, and you see it evidenced in most games in the genre. If you interact once with another person, you will see that it's actually super beneficial for you to do that. Out of this world beneficial to communicate with somebody and eventually you will see that connecting with people is super beneficial and you're gonna go to a whole another level if you do that. Quests no longer require groups. Raiding in dungeons are queuable at any time. Mob takes share. Features such as Automated. But you also need to understand that Blizzard kind of, I think, I think that this is right, kind of removed the fact that you need a lot of players to kill one mob because I have been in a situation myself where I'm trying to find these players and their player, these players are not there. There are no players in my area, no players that I want that want to help, and I'm whispering in every every person almost. I'm talking in every chat and the players are not mm. there. Making and dungeon finders and raid finders streamline the process of finding a group, but often at the cost of meaningful social interaction, these systems tend to create temp. I don't agree with that. I'm sorry, man. I see what you're saying and I kind of agree with it. LFRs and uh, random dungeon finders are for players that not necessarily want to avoid social interaction but they just don't want to get through the hassle of what item level are you sir are you going through this this and this and this and this requirement in order to join the rate which is the annoying part the toxic part of the players that are just dividing the community in a couple of halves or just even two halves of good players and the players that are just casuals. I'm the casual, I'm a casual representative and I'm gonna defend the casuals all day. And we all deserve to try that game, you know? The groups focused on completing content as quickly as possible with little to no emphasis on communication or forming lasting relationships. It's all about instant gratification and getting dopamine where it's needed before this reduced attention span turns what could have been a lifelong subscriber to a forever uninstall. And so what this demands is a design that is simple, streamlined, and convenient, and reintroducing the requirement of other players to... I really like his webcam. I think it's unique. This is unique. Success is not simple, it's not streamlined, nor is it convenient. So all of this is to say whether it be the environment around MMOs evolving and sapping away their social ability, whether it be retaining a player base that only becomes more and more familiar with them as time goes on, or whether it be the developers designing them this way, they've become very antisocial. Gone is the unknown, and with it, the dependence. If you're seen as an asset, you'll be treated as such, and if you're seen as an obstacle, you'll be treated as such. This weak tie interdependence system 
that these MMOs were designed around has aged poorly as it's dependent on dependence. So as this dependence wanes with increased knowledge and skill, so too do the social ties and etiquettes that used to encourage interaction and cooperation. And as a result, what you're left with is what is probably one of the most antisocial, social-based genres to exist. Like the video if you liked it, because I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Mad respect for the video. Uh, go subscribe the guy. He's having a show, obviously. He's having MMO theory. There are a lot of reasons why MMOs are antisocial. The whole culture is a little bit toxic. It's all about comparison. It's all about being better than the others. You know, the competitiveness, it's killing it a little bit. You can be a good casual. You can spend 12 hours in a game and still be casual. You don't have to sweat over the game. You know, if you spend 12 hours, you're not necessarily sweating over the game. You, you can be that guy. If you just spend 12 hours into the game, do your own shit, that's perfectly fine. If you're helping other people, that's perfectly fine. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, share, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Thank you. Peace. Bye.